Hey, what is up guys? Zero Fats here coming at you on behalf of AdventuresOnTheRiver.com. I got a little, this is just a little preemptive uh, beginner clip here. I shot the video you guys are about to watch um, and I shot it because um, I wanted to kind of like go through a haul video with you guys. Went to the thrift stores yesterday, got a bunch of board games, kind of wanted to go through it with you guys, talk about return on investment and what they were all worth and how I did, okay? Now, you're going to hear me talk about return on investment in the video, and you're going to hear me say like a certain amount what my return on investment was in the video. I want you guys to keep something in mind throughout this video. There's more going on here than just me going to thrift stores, buying board games, and then selling them through Amazon FBA. There's more going on here. Okay? What else is going on here besides that? Okay? Look at the video you're watching. Okay, this video you're watching is monetized. Okay, I'm making money off of this video. All right, what else is going on here? Throughout this video, you'll hear me talk about adventuresontheriver.com. Okay, now although there's valuable information in this video and I want to help you guys, also keep in mind this video is also a commercial for my website. And uh, you know, maybe it's not quite a commercial, I don't want to devalue the video, but it's you know. This video is also used as a promotional tool to promote AdventuresOnTheRiver.com. So those two other things going on here, besides just me going out to the thrift stores and buying games and then selling them on Amazon FBA. So you could argue that those games are going to make money for me when they sell, but then after I sell those games, those games are going to continue to make money for me through this video and through people going to my website and purchasing a membership. So there's other things going on here and the reason I wanted to do this little video clip in front of this video is because I wanted to let you guys know man if you're trying to support yourself and be self-employed and be independent think outside of the box you know diversify your revenue streams don't make it just about picking don't make it just about going out there and finding stuff at garage sales. Man, use everything. Use everything at your disposal. I mean, I, I have income coming in from multiple sources. Okay, multiple sources. Now, I do that with a sense of ethics and a sense of morals. You know, I, I don't want to cheat anybody. I don't want to uh, rip anybody off. That's how I live my life. A sense of moral and a sense of ethics. I want to do things the right way, what matters to me, what I consider the right way. Um, but I wanted to put this in the front of this video. It's a long video. This is going to make it even longer. But I want you guys to be aware of that. I want you to see what's happening here. There's more than one thing happening here uh, that I'm making money off of just from going out and getting those dumb board games and then turning around and flipping them on Amazon. I've made money with the board games and that's physical product and that's great. But then I've made money from content from my YouTube channel and then I've made money from you know, funneling people to my website where they can get even more valuable information. So go ahead without further ado, let's get into the actual video. But I just wanted to kind of like open you guys' eyes a little bit to see what was happening here. Um, I think it could help you. I want you to be aware of it because I want you guys all to be thinking outside the box when you're out there trying to make money for yourself. Peace, guys. Hey, what is up, everybody? Zero Fats here coming at you, and a happy Thursday to you. Coming at you on behalf of AdventuresOnTheRiver.com. That is my website. Teach you how to make a full-time income using the power of Amazon.com. Wanted to talk to you guys today. Um, well, I wanted to share something with you guys today. I wanted to share my haul. I went to the thrift stores uh, yesterday, got some stuff. Um, mostly, I got some... Uh, Mostly I was dealing in board games yesterday. I was out there. I was on the prowl for board games yesterday. I was in a board game kind of kind of mood. Uh, and uh, So we're talking about toys and games now here, right? And the toys and games category on Amazon, you know, I usually try to shoot for a, uh, a, a, a in-category ranking, bestseller ranking, of about 141,000. Okay? I want it to be 141,000 or less. That's my in category um, like that's kinda my goal that's my goal 
Uh, if it's close, I'll pick it up. If it's under, fabulous. But 141,000, give or take, that's kind of what I'm aiming at. If it's like a million, I don't really want it. Um, I don't really want to list it on Amazon per se. Um, that's going to be different in each category, okay? That's going to be different in each category. If you want to know more about that kind of thing, check out my website. I go into depth talking about, you know, bestseller rankings and what to aim at and what to look for and all that good stuff. Uh, but for this video uh, and for the purpose of going through these games with you guys, just want you to know my aim was 141,000 bestseller ranking. Um, so, let's get into what I found. Um, so, first off, went out. Now keep in mind, I wasn't using a scanner today. Didn't have, I, I, I didn't use my scanner, I didn't use any, any cell phone. I just went out and kind of eyed them, used, used my experience, <laughs> uh, and I just kind of just kind of went for it, you know. Uh, first thing I got is this uh, Maisie, Maisie board game. It's uh, Lucy Cousins Maisie game, right? And this game, uh, this game, I paid a uh, Paid a dollar ninety nine for it. It's going for about nine ninety nine on Amazon. Okay, so it's going for ten bucks. Um, seller ranking of eighty three thousand. Uh, so it's 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 definitely better than my uh, definitely better than my cutoff. So good job on that one. Um, okay, next is this uh this is a puzzle. It's like a three generations of Walgreens puzzle. The box is a little beat up. It hasn't been opened at all. Hasn't been open, so the box has some shelfware, but uh, the game has the puzzle has actually not been opened. This three generations of Walgreens puzzle, uh, I paid a buck ninety nine for it. It's going for twenty seven ninety nine on Amazon. Now the downside of this puzzle is its seller ranking is like one million one hundred thirty one thousand. So seller ranking's high. That tells me one thing: this is a long tail sale. Um, so. Generally, I don't like sending stuff like this to FBA. It's a long tail sale. It's probably gonna sit there for a while. But I only got one copy of it, so that uh, that store that multiples in storage uh, rule is not gonna apply to me. If you want to know more about that multiple uh, multiple items in storage uh, and the long term storage fee? Check out my website. We go into detail about that there. Uh, but for our little purposes in this video. Um, this uh, this will be okay going to FBA just because it's only the one copy and the price is right. You know I'm gonna sell it for about 27, 28 bucks, so I can sit on it for a little while. Hopefully it'll sell it around Christmas time or something. Uh, next up, I found this uh, Survivor game, this Survivor board game. Now look, you guys. Like I said, I wasn't using my scanner, I wasn't using my cell phone. Uh, the reason I picked this game up was quite simply because the box looked really nice and I am a huge, huge Survivor fan. That's something you guys probably didn't know about me, but I love that show Survivor. I'm a big fan, I've been a fan ever since it started. Uh, so that's why I picked this up. Decent, nice looking box, uh, not too beat up. And uh, I'm a big Survivor fan. This Survivor game, I paid a buck ninety nine for it, and it's going for fifteen ninety nine on Amazon. Seller ranking sixty nine thousand, well under my cutoff. So, good job on that. Next up, The Amazing Race. My girlfriend's a big fan of the show, but I picked this game up because um, I picked this game up. Well, I picked this game up. It's quite. It's a no brainer. I picked this game up. Because number one, it was cheap, $1.99, and number two, it's brand new. It's still in its original plastic packaging. It's brand new. You know, on my website, I talk about this little theory called the, uh, the new book theory, okay? But it applies to almost anything. Uh, if it's still brand new and it's in its packaging, you decrease your risk substantially by picking it up. You know, because there's a better chance it's going to be worth money if it's brand new. And also, it's usually going to be easier to move. So, anyways, on this Amazing Race game, I paid a buck ninety nine for it. Uh, it was going for twenty seven ninety nine on Amazon. Best seller ranking of 90000 Well under my cutoff of 141000 for toys and games. Okay. Next up. This old school version of Payday. This is an old school board game. I picked up for uh, this. Actually, I paid two ninety nine for this. Um, got a bestseller ranking of one hundred and forty four thousand. So it's a, just a little over my my cutoff of one hundred and forty one thousand. That's okay. I can roll with that. It's a range, folks. 
I'm looking for in that range of 141,000. If it's a little bit over, I can deal with that. If it's a ton over, I generally try to steer clear of it. Unless the price is right. That other game, it was going for 27, 28 bucks. I can deal with that sitting on it for a little while. But this one, okay, paid 2.99 for it. It's going for 20 bucks. So, and that's in this condition. That's what I can get through Amazon FBA in this current condition of probably I would say good condition considering the box. Um, I might be able to upgrade it to very good condition. It just depends on what I can do with it when I'm going to restore this a little bit. So, we'll see. So, 299 up to 20. Okay, next up, brand new in the box. Man, when I see these brand new board games still in the plastic, I generally try to take a chance on them. This was 499, guys. So that kind of like I kind of didn't want to do it. That's a lot, man. That's a lot for a, a board game in a thrift store. Now, for a brand new game of life board game, 499, I know, granted, that's pretty cheap, but you got to understand, you're in the business of reselling. You know, you need that ROI, you need that return on investment to be high. You need it to be as high as possible. Um, especially when you're talking about thrift stores, okay? Now, as far as I'm concerned, 499 is a little steep for a board game in a thrift store. But this was brand new, and I felt like I could at least get 10 or 15 bucks from it. So I went ahead and bought it. It was $4.99. Uh, now look, the game of life. You know it's a popular game. Seller ranking is 16,000. This game's gonna flat out move. It's gonna flat out move. Um, there's a lot of offers out there. There's a lot of game of life up there on FBA. It's gonna keep you from moving quite as fast. Um, it's going for 15 bucks. I paid 4.99 for it, and it's going for 15 on FBA. So, you know, it's it's okay. All right, next up. This is one of those, I did a video a while back where I packaged up a board game for you guys and I was showing you NFLopoly. Here's another one of those situations. This is IUopoly. Now whenever I see one of these off-brand uh, Monopoly type games, I usually always pick it up because generally you can make money off of it. Uh, this IUopoly right here, uh, I paid a buck ninety nine for it. It's going for twenty one dollars. Now I'm talking about when I say twenty one dollars, I'm talking about the price I can get for it. I'm not talking about what it's going for new. I'm talking about the price I can get for it on Amazon FBA when I'm competing with those other FBA sellers and I'm competing with Amazon if they have uh, a dog in the race, so to speak. So twenty one bucks on this. The seller ranking one hundred and seventy six thousand. Now my cutoff, if you remember, was 141,000. So this is a little over what I wanted, okay? But that's okay. It's 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 a few thousand over. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. All right. Next up, this one. The box is kind of beat up. It's kind of beat up, man. And it kind of like had me thinking. I don't know if I want to get this or not, but. Even though the box is kind of beat up, this thing is weird looking. Power Barons. I've never heard of this game before. It looked old and it looked obscure. You know, and the thing about it is, guys, usually you can make money off of obscure board games. If you see a board game that you don't recognize and it seems very obscure, uh, if it's cheap, you might want to just go ahead and pick it up and take a chance on it. This was $1.99. I took a chance on it. The box is beat up. Even in this condition, this Power Barons, I can make 15 bucks off of this online. It's $1.99, make 15 off of it selling it. Now the reason for that is I gotta sell it in a, in a good condition. I can't sell it in a very good, I can't sell it, you know, even though I'm probably gonna shrink wrap this up, the, the board still needs repaired. I'm gonna have to repair the, uh, the box and stuff. So I don't know if I feel justified selling it as very good, you know, after having to repair it. And Okay, so 15 bucks, paid a dollar ninety-nine for it. The uh, the uh, best seller ranking, four hundred and sixty-four thousand. So you know that's that's pretty over my cutoff. So here we're dealing with a game that it's not that good of a condition, and uh, it's not in the best condition. The box anyway. The game inside's in pretty good condition, but the box is kind of beat up, really. Uh, the seller ranking's not as good as I would like. Um, and because of the condition, this game lost a lot of its value. Now understand something, this game Power Barons, like, 
brand new it's like 50 bucks or something so I was right I was right in thinking that this game was gonna be worth money because it's obscure but my problem was I didn't realize how much the condition of the box was gonna devalue it you know and that's just something I wasn't gonna know without my uh, without my uh, smartphone handy to, to go through um, that's okay. You see, a dollar ninety nine up to fifteen bucks. There's still some profit being made there, so that's okay. You know, that's all right. Okay, next up, picked up this uh, 1997 year in a box calendar. It's a Mickey Mouse 1997 calendar. Now look, guys, you're probably thinking, man, that's an outdated calendar. Who cares about that? Well, you know, people who like Mickey Mouse care about that. <laughs> That's just the way it is. You know, uh, I got a, I got another calendar. Uh, I got another calendar up for sale. I think the FBA right now is uh, Fenway Park. It's uh, like uh, all these, uh, you know, all these pictures of Fenway Park. It's a baseball stadium. All these pictures of Fenway Park on this calendar. It's like outdated. I think it's like 2008 or something. I don't know, but. Uh, that calendar is like $25, $26. I mean, that, you know, people like those pictures. And if you find a fan base that likes those pictures, sometimes those outdated calendar, calendars can just be worth money because people like the pictures. So this calendar right here, this year in a box calendar, I paid $0.99 cents for it. It's selling on Amazon for uh, $15. What's the downside? It's unranked. This means not a lot of these have sold. Probably none. Um, not very many of them have sold. Okay, it's unranked. Uh, the other thing I noticed though about that whole thing about it being unranked was there's no picture for this. So to me, like I'm gonna scan the front of this and make sure it's got a picture up there. That's gonna increase the value of it by a 500 percent. Just having a picture attached to this thing. People don't like to buy things they can't look at, and that's just the way it is. You need a picture up there when you list anything. We talk about this kind of thing a lot more on my website, adventuresontheriver.com. Check it out if you want to know more about this kind of stuff. But yeah, man, definitely. Picture. So I'm going to put a picture on this. So I'm not worried about the bestseller ranking too much because it doesn't have a picture. But it's going for 15 bucks. I paid 99 cents for it. We'll still call it a long tail sale. So, mixed on that, right? And then, pick this up. This was, this cost me, uh, this was, uh, how much did I pay for this thing? I think it was a price thing on it. Uh, I think I paid 50 cents. I paid 50 cents. This is an old school Teddy Ruxpin puzzle. <laughs> Listen, guys, I don't know about you guys and all you other resellers out there, but I have terrible generally terrible luck with puzzles. I don't sell a lot of puzzles. Every once in a while I sell like a Coca-Cola puzzle. Um, you know, it just depends. I don't do very good with puzzles. Uh, you know, that's just me. I picked this Teddy Rus Ruxpin puzzle up. I opened it. I counted all the pieces. It was supposed to have 63 pieces. I made sure all the pieces were in there. So here we have a used puzzle. Uh, 63 pieces inside, all intact. It's vintage. This is from like 1983. I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in 1983, man, Teddy Ruxpin was a big deal. Kids love Teddy Ruxpin. So I thought, hey, you know, I'll take a shot on it. It's old, it's vintage. But uh, it, when I did, um, I figured out this wasn't, this wasn't listed on Amazon. Not even listed on Amazon. That doesn't scare me too much. So I head over to eBay and kind of check to see if there's a market on it. I found it listed. For a dollar ninety nine, a buck ninety nine. Now I paid ninety nine cents for this one. Okay, I wrote it down here. I think I just said fifty cents. That was a garage sale sticker. I got it at the thrift store for ninety nine cents. So, um, I paid ninety nine cents for this. Uh, it's selling on eBay for a dollar ninety nine. No copies have sold, and it's not listed on Amazon. But what that tells me is this puzzle. <laughs> It's probably a strikeout for me. I probably didn't, you know, I could list it, you know, but I'm not sending it to FBA. There's not enough money involved. Not enough money. Guys, don't send stuff to FBA that's not worth at least 12 or 13 bucks. Seriously. 10 bucks, at the very least, you know, you're just wasting your time. You're not making enough money. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's how I teach it on my website. If you don't if you don't subscribe to that philosophy, hey, good on you, man. I don't feel like selling thousands and thousands and thousands of items to pay my rent every month. Forget that. 
I don't want to do it. There's better ways and better, better, better uh, items and units out there to spend my time getting that make more money faster and I don't have to sell as many of them. I don't want to sell a bunch of $1.99 items. That's stupid, in my opinion. So if you don't subscribe to that, you know, don't even bother going to my website because that's how I teach it on my website. Don't mess with stuff that's worth less than 10 or 15 bucks for FBA. Now if you're selling like Merchant Fulfilled, that's a little bit different of a ball game. But for FBA purposes, and that's what I bought all these board games for, FBA, um, don't mess with crap that's not, you can't get at least 10 or 15 bucks off of. Uh, so this is kind of a strikeout for me. Alright, so that's what I picked up. There's all the board games. Now, you might be thinking, wow man, you, you bought all these board games for a buck ninety nine. you're going to sell them for like 15, 20 bucks, you're doing really great. Well, how great did I really do? Now let's, let's break this down for a minute. Now look, total inventory value of everything here, of everything here, total inventory value is 167.96. That's my total inventory value. My total cost yesterday, picking up all these games and stuff, $21.90. Okay? Now let's tack on 35%. Let's say Amazon's going to charge me a base fee of around 35%. That's an average. It's going to be a little bit more and a little bit less depending on how much I'm selling the item for. Those games that are $27.99, their 15% is going to be a little bit more, but it's going to matter a little bit less because I'm making more money. The items that cost a little bit less, they're going to take a lesser percentage, but it's going to matter more because I'm making less money. If, you, if that's confusing to you, I don't mean it to be. I know it sounds a little bit confusing. Um, check out my website, Ventures on the River. We go into detail about ROI there. Just check out the FBA module. We go into return on investment, and that stuff will uh, clear right up for you. But anyways, uh, I'm going to use a base of 35% for Amazon fees. Now what that equals is about $58.77 on my inventory value of $167.96. Okay? And we're going to take the $21.90 I got in cost and we're going to add it to the 5877 that Amazon Amazon's going to take out in fees. We got a total of $80.67 in cost for me. Okay? That means a profit of about 8729. What does it mean? That means I probably made about 87 87 88 bucks yesterday, okay? My return on investment for all that is 108%. 108% return on investment. That means for every board game that I spent $2 on, I'm probably going to make about $4 on. Okay? It's funny, isn't it? Because, like, you look at it and you say, oh, look, you bought that for 2 bucks, and you're going to sell it for 20 bucks. You bought that for $1.99, and you're going to sell it for 10 bucks. Wow, man, you're kicking ass. You're doing great. But then you start thinking about your cost, and you start thinking about what you're going to pay Amazon, and you start thinking about all these little fees and all these little costs, and in the end, and ultimately, it equals 108% ROI. Is 108% return on investment bad? No, man, it's not bad. It's respectful. But I like to look at ROI like this, man. It should be better or worse depending on what you're doing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to thrift stores and garage sales, I mean, I think you should have a better ROI than 100%. You ought to be able to do a little better. But guess what? Yesterday, guess what kind of thrift stores I was going to? We went to Goodwills yesterday. <laughs> and Goodwills aren't like other thrift stores, man. You know, matter of fact, I would say, you know, if you want to make good ROI, 300, 400%, I'd stay away from Goodwills. <laughs> You know, board games you're gonna pick up at a Goodwill for this much. You're gonna pick up even cheaper at like a like a garage sale or like a like a like a, just a local thrift store. But that Goodwill chain of thrift stores, you know, you're not gonna get as good of prices. Um, 108 percent respectful. You know, it's it's respectful. You know, you figure like I made about 88 dollars uh, yesterday and profit probably is what that's gonna equal over the next month or two. That's gonna that's gonna dole, dole out to me. Um, what does it mean? What's the takeaway? Number one, it sh you should all be thinking, wow, 108%, man, that's not as good as I thought it was going to be. And it's not, man. you got to pay attention to your cost. 
what your cost is for the actual merchandise you're picking up and what your cost is for what you're paying to Amazon you know and just little costs here and there you know you gotta pay attention to that stuff and uh, what it should be telling you is one thing you know make sure what you're paying for the inventory is low 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 do you think that the $4.99 that I paid for the game of life and I'm turning around and selling it for 15 bucks do you think that affected my ROI hell yeah hell yeah it affected it that that really affected it I mean every time I spend too much for something it doesn't matter if I'm gonna make a little bit off of it I spent too much on it I mean I got you know just as important as the bestseller ranking you have to pay attention to your cutoff right if my cutoff is look dude I'm not paying more than two dollars for board game I don't care what it is unless I know for certain I can make a ton of money off of it no more than two bucks that's it that's all there is to it cost matters your cost matters you have to pay attention to cost because one thing you have to understand is for every 4.99 brand new game of life that's out there there's three board games that are a dollar that's gonna make you twice as much money just because of your low cost and what they're going for online and that game of life man when I was out there at the thrift stores that was the cream of my crop why 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 I knew I was paying a little bit too much for it but to me it was that was brand new and I love the game of life <laughs> doesn't everybody that's a great board game you know and I thought man this is killer wrong <laughs> wrong man that was probably one of my worst investments yesterday um, and you think like oh man what whatever 20 bucks you know it's it's neither here nor there it matters it always matters man because it's a it's it's a mentality it's it's a it's a mentality you know it could be twenty dollars it could be two thousand dollars it could be twenty thousand dollars what matters at twenty dollars matters at two thousand dollars do you know do, does that make sense i mean they're the same habits apply you, you need to be in the same habits no matter what you know so what does that mean i made a mistake yesterday you know my my deal yesterday was hey, i'm not spending more than two bucks on board games at goodwill that's their normal price i'm not spending more than that point blank i saw a brand new game of life and i i went i broke my own rules <laughs> and, and my roi suffered for it man look that 4.99 my ROI probably would have been bumped up. My, my return on investment yesterday probably would have been bumped up to 112, 115, 120%. If that 499, instead, that was five bucks. Instead, I, I would have bought two more $1.99 board games and made another 15 or 20 bucks a piece on them. That's 40 bucks, you know? Instead, I spent the 499 on that one and got the $15 you know sale I mean it you know what I'm saying it matters those things matter so one takeaway is watch your cost you guys you set a rule for your cost on this junk and we talk about this in depth on my website adventures on the river dot com uh, we talk about you know sticking to your guns setting your cost don't go over it or you're gonna screw up your return on investment and I didn't follow my own rules yesterday and I got screwed over a little bit now is it bad? ROI 108%? No, it's not bad, but if this is your sole method and this is how you're going to earn your income, you know, it matters. You'll be doing this every day, man. Every day you'll be going out there hitting, hitting these places, get trying to get good deals. And your ROI needs to be over, over, over 100% every day. You need, I mean, that's minimum in my book. That's bare minimum. 100% that's bare minimum especially when you're going to thrift stores and garage sales you got no excuse not to have at least 100% ROI man you need 200, 300, 400% ROI why? why does it need to be that high? one, you make more money and two, you're hedging your bets you might not know what that means but what it means is what if you got 10 board games you bought if you're, they're at 100% ROI for the whole investment, what if five of them don't sell for some reason? They have good seller rankings, but for some reason one or two of them didn't sell. Well, your bets, you're, you're covered. You're covered because you got such a high ROI. You're at 400% ROI. 
400%. That means every board game you sell, you quadrupled your money. You quadrupled your investment. That means you don't got to sell all 10 of them to make your money. You can just sell five of them to make your money. See what I'm saying? At 100%, there's more pressure to sell them all. At 400% return on investment, there's not as much pressure to sell them all. You can let some of them sit for a while. See what I'm saying? That's why cost matters. Okay? Cost matters. What else can I tell you? What else can I tell you? Oh, I had fun. <laughs> I had fun yesterday, man. Listen, I had fun yesterday. That's what that's what, you know, kinda like picking is all about, you know, just going like getting out there and, and having fun. That's how I started, you know, is is is, is picking and, and, and doing it that way. But uh yeah, listen, I teach on my website other methods besides picking uh, to, to make money with Amazon, especially the FBA program. You know, on the website, we talk about importing. We talk about, you know, digital sales, uh, selling ebooks, selling information products. Um, we talk about, you know, um, we talk about, uh, you know, just selling merchant fulfilled, picking, we talk about wholesale, um, wholesale buying. We talk about all kinds of different ways to make money using Amazon on the website. Uh, picking, you know, and going to thrift stores is just one way to do that. Um, I don't think it's the best way to do it. I think it's a great supplemental. Um, if you're going out and doing what I did yesterday, if you're going out and doing that every day to make your income, guess what? You're going to be working your butt off. You might as well be punching a time clock, dude, because you are going to be out there busting your ass every day. Look, I made about $88 yesterday. Probably about two hours of work, maybe. You know, when it's all said and done, you might say three hours of work because I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack, I'm gonna make all this, make sure all the stuffs in the board games. I'm gonna clean them. I'm gonna package them up and stuff like that. So I'll probably have about three hours of work in that. Maybe three hours of work, $88. Uh, what do you say on that? About 25 bucks an hour, something like that. That's pretty good money. You're like, whoa, 25, 30 bucks an hour. That's, that's, that's freaking awesome, dude. That's awesome. You can, I'll do that every day and make money. Yeah, you do that every day and make money, but it's hard. You're still working really hard, and you're going to find it hard to repeat the process. It's hard to maintain consistency. I'm not saying it's impossible. It is very possible, but it's hard to maintain consistency. Let's say you got a 20 mile radius you work in. Eventually there's going to be days where none of them have the board games you want. None of them have the coffee mugs you want. None of them have the books you want. None of them have this you want. None of them have that you want. There's going to be dry days, you know. What happens when you find three other people doing the same thing you're doing in a 20 mile radius? And they're all like minded. They're all just as smart as you. <laughs> then what, man? Then what? <laughs> then what are you doing? Right? It's it's crazy because then then you're you're in competition now. Now you're in competition. You got someone else uh, digging into your inventory source. It, it's difficult. You got to find the name of the game to me is you have to find ways to sustain your income streams. You have to find ways to be consistent. Okay? Now one of those ways is looking at other ways to make sales, other ways to find inventory. Uh, we talk about that on the website a lot, uh, adventuresontheriver.com. We talk about uh, wholesale buying, like I said, we talk about importing, we talk about some other uh, ways um, to maintain consistent sales uh, and to keep your money flowing in because, you know, like I said, this thrift store stuff can dry up sometimes, you know, and it's not uh, always consistent. So you got to have alternate methods to do what you do. Um, but anyways, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I've kind of rambled on a little bit. You know, I do that. You guys, you know, I do that. I ramble on. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Um, in June on adventuresontheriver.com for all of you guys out there who are, uh, who are, uh, doing the digital module on adventuresontheriver.com. I just want you guys to know, uh, I've just purchased rights to a, uh, ebook cover creator. Um, and that's going to become available in June for all you adventures on the river.com members. Uh, you're going to have access to a, uh, a really, really nice, man, it's a boss. It's a boss cover creator, man. It's, it's a great cover creator. It's going to help you make excellent covers 
for your ebook empire, your uh, your ebook publishing company that you're learning how to make uh, using that module. Uh, this ebook cover creator is really going to help you. But yeah, there's going to be a serious upgrade to the whole uh, digital module in June. Uh, so that's something to look forward to and coming up for all you uh, Adventures on the River.com members. Uh, but back to this topic of this video. Yeah, when you guys are out there thrifting, although it looked like it did really good, you guys saw the end result. The end result was about 108% ROI. Um, so make sure you're watching your costs, guys. Uh, if you say, hey, look, dude, I'm buying puzzles today. I'm going out and I'm buying puzzles. Guess what? I'm not spending more than a dollar per puzzle. That's it. That's what I need to spend to make money on these puzzles. Boom, boom, boom. Well, guess what? Don't go out there and get like all wide-eyed and you know heart melting over some crazy puzzle of Knight Rider because when you were a kid you loved Knight Rider and this one's unopened. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> Only if it's a dollar or under. <laughs> Don't do what I did, man. Be smart. <laughs> but uh, nah, man. That's that. That's uh, that's kind of the the lesson of the day, really, man. Watch your cost and uh. What initially looks really good probably isn't quite as good. Um, that's why it's important to watch that cost. Of, you know, Amazon's gonna get you in fees. Understand, Amazon's gonna get theirs. Does that make sense? Amazon is going to get theirs, no matter what. Amazon's in it for Amazon. You need to understand that they're in it for them. They're not in it for you. So, who's in charge of making sure you get yours? That's you. You're in charge of making sure you get yours. So you need to make sure you're buying things that are worth enough money. You need to buy, make sure you're buying things at the right price. And you need to make sure you're buying the right crap. And that's all there is to it, man. You can make great money in this business. You can make a full-time income. You can support your family. You can do all those things. But it requires making the right moves. And it kind of requires thinking a little bit outside the box sometimes. Anyways. Hope this video has been helpful to you guys. If it has, please like, please share, please subscribe. Uh, my intentions are good. My heart is pure. Okay? Check out my website if you get a chance. See you guys. Peace.